We are now in open session. Let's see. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to and the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. I move that the board enter into open session and affirm that the board met earlier today in executive session for the purpose of discussing contracts and matters involving violations of the declaration and regulations for which a member, his family members, tenants, guests, or other invitees are responsible. Second. Mm -hmm. We did that. Contract. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Terry. I confirm that a quorum is present and proper notice was sent to all members of record. Pete. I move the board approve the agenda. Second. Second. Motion made to approve motion made and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Terry. I move the board approve the minutes of the February 17, 2021 regular board meeting. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the February 17, 2021 regular board meeting. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we are now at the point of the meeting for member comments on unfinished business and new business business agenda items and member general comments. And I forgot my script, but I do remember this. Please use proper decorum. You have three minutes to make your comment. Please state your name and lot number. And if you want to speak, say it out loud. Say, I wish to speak. Unmute yourself and say, I wish to speak. We're going to give you another minute. Everybody, another minute. Also, virtually raise your hand. It can do. We're still going to wait. Anybody have comments? 
Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move forward with the meeting. Uh, let's see. Our first item is a report from the Orange County Supervisor, Lee Frame. Good morning. Do you hear me all right? Yes. Hi, Lee. Yes. Okay. Uh, first item, uh, redistricting. We were supposed to be uh, working on that. We were supposed to be getting uh, the information from the census uh, on the 1st of March. It doesn't look like that'll be available until about the uh, 1st of September, which means that uh, the uh, uh, state and local offices that'll be running for uh, election this fall will have to stay with the old districts. Uh, everybody has to have their uh, uh, nominations or to be uh, uh, apply for their office uh, by uh, June. So since that can't happen, we will be holding this fall election, state and local elections with the old districts. We'll probably uh, uh, get that and start on that uh, sometime this fall, uh, redistricting. And at that point, it'll uh, uh, have an impact on next year's uh, elections. Uh, Wilderness Crossing has been uh, moving ahead. We've had a lot of meetings on transportation. Uh, we've got another one scheduled next week on water and sewer systems. Uh, they have started uh, a website, wildernesscrossingva.com, which uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of detailed information, but uh, showing uh, uh, just getting started with that uh, website so that people can begin to see what's uh, going to happen there. Uh, I've been assured that the uh, developers will be holding some town hall meetings before they get to the point of actually uh, uh, filing and, and uh, submitting things for the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors to review. Uh, let everybody know that the supervisor meetings, uh, although we meet in person, uh, we don't have enough space to uh, adequately take in a lot of people. So they're all being uh, streamed live. They're being live streamed so people can watch them if they want to watch them. Uh, you can get that information of where to connect uh, by going to the county's website. Uh, we had uh, a hazardous waste collection uh, uh, last fall. Uh, must be that everybody's staying home because they cleaned a lot more trash out than they have in the past. Normally, we get about 150 vehicles run through there. This time, we had almost 20, 230 vehicles coming through for that, uh, uh, for that hazardous waste collection. Uh, we ended up spending uh, a lot more than our, not a lot, but a little bit more than our budget. We budgeted 25000 for it, but we had so much stuff coming in, we ended up uh, uh, costing us about 27000 some of you may already be aware that the Waze, the people who do the uh, uh, provide mapping services and, uh, uh, and direction services, that they have separately uh, uh, changed their routing system so that people coming into the Lake of the Woods won't go to the back gate anymore. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> Good for them. Uh, VDOT's uh, work that. Uh, that's the report I got. But if you see, if, uh, if security finds that we find uh, find ourselves with a lot of people coming, trying to come into the back gate again, please let me know and I will get back to VDOT and we'll see what else needs to be done. Uh, some good news. Uh, the uh, uh, Virginia General Assembly in their Appropriation Act just approved $36 million to uh, build a new Germanic Community College uh, Health Science Building. Uh, the uh, this will be the Dr. Frank and Nancy Tersage uh, Health Science Building. Uh, the uh, design and approvals, drawings, bids, and stuff like that will all uh, be taking place starting uh, probably sometime uh, early this summer. And hopefully they can start construction sometime uh, next summer in the, in the summer of 2022. Uh, subject to your questions, that's my report. Directors, any questions or comments? I have a, Jennifer. Walt, go ahead. Hi, Lee. Uh, you mentioned the hazardous waste. Uh, historically, the, the county has had an occasionally an electronics uh, collection day for people who've got old computers and stuff like that. Yes. Is there anything like that in the works? Uh, yeah, I think we will have one in the works. We haven't planned it yet. We're working on that, but I expect to do that again. Okay, because I, I know a lot of people are got piles of stuff that they need to get rid of. 
<laughs> That's what happens. Uh, I may have mentioned in the past that uh, everybody staying home is helping out the county with uh, sales tax. <laughs> Pete? Y yes, Lee. Um, I have a, uh, could you uh, give a, just a brief uh, update to our, our members about what's going on with Greene County and RSA? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, uh, Greene County wants to pull out. Uh, the, uh, it requires the approval of all the other counties to allow that. Uh, and uh, uh, I have been told, at least by some people, that uh, Madison will never allow that. But uh, I've asked uh, our uh, chairman to contact the uh, Madison County chairman and see how they feel about that. Okay. Uh, if that uh, goes through, uh, green uh, orange will probably agree to let them out. Uh, I have a somewhat of a preference for that because uh, there's a lot of work going on in green and I'd rather keep our RSA staff focused on the Germana wilderness area. But other than that, uh, I don't know. If they don't let them out, then it comes down to an issue of uh, facility fees and a whole bunch of stuff. I've got a stack of, uh, of legal briefs about that thick that I've been going through uh, uh, what with uh, various court cases and stuff. I don't think it'll have any impact on RSA operations in, uh, in uh, Orange, although if they leave, there may be some more overhead that'll have to be picked up by Orange and Madison. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lee. I didn't mean to put you on the spot for that. Thank you. That's all right. Uh, uh, I'm expecting uh, at uh, Tuesday's board meeting, uh, if not in the open session, certainly in the closed session to get nailed by my other supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions, directors? Well, Lee, I'm so glad that Waze has been fixed for the back gate, we hope. <laughs> Thank you for that news. Hi. All right. All right, Lee, thank you for everything. Thank you for your presentation. All right. Take care. Thank All you, right. We move on to item 4.2, report from Orange County Sheriff Mark Amos. Taylor, is he on the line? Okay. Since he is not here, we will move to 4.3, report from Chief Scott Walker. Chief, are you there? Hi, good morning, ma'am. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Oh, yes, well, we can we had... hear you. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. Well, ma'am, we had a fairly quiet February. Our patrol staff and maintenance staff did an amazing job during the snow days and the ice that we had. We did have some prolonged power outages in some areas, but REC was able to jump on that pretty quickly, and not too many went more than 12 hours. Um, I would report that my staff has completed their dose two of the Moderna uh, vaccines, all that were eligible at the time. And so we're excited about that. And we're still looking forward to supporting any operation that is done on site for our members. Um, and we're also planning for the summer concert series. Mr. Rodenberg gave us the dates on that this week. And we're, we're excited to get back to some level of normalcy. So this, this is amazing. Uh, any questions for the chief? Phil. Um, chief, could you explain to uh, the directors and to the members how um, the staff will handle wearing masks? Um, I'm thinking also of like traffic stops, what your uh, procedure is and, and uh, how that compares to Orange County. Thank you. Well, we're following the same directive that we were given by Orange County for our traffic stops. Uh, basically, during a traffic stop, that is the, one of the most dangerous spots for an officer. So we don't want any of our communications to be misinterpreted. Um, so we will try to maintain our six foot distance at all times. You're not having to sign a summons where we're trading pins back and forth. Um, so that's what we're doing currently. We're trying to maintain our social distances. And also, if, if, if I do get in some kind of hazardous situation, not necessarily from the driver. It could be a, an, uh, someone from an onlooker standpoint or a motorist. I don't want anything to be able to hinder my ability to give verbal commands and be misunderstood. So as soon as the situation is safe, though, we will mask up. Anytime we've helped out medical response calls and things like that, where there's no danger to the officer, or I don't have to be, I don't have to be understood in some form of threatening situation, um, I'll have my mask on, sir. 
Thank you, Chief. Any other questions for Chief? Hearing none. Thank you, Chief. Enjoy. Thank your day. you. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have Dan Cianci report on fire and rescue? I know they sent it in, but you don't see him. Okay. Just... Jennifer. Yes. May I just comment uh, the uh, the report that fire and rescue sent in. Um, um, was very thorough and very helpful for this this month. A lot of great safety issues in there. John Farrell compiled that. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. And you're absolutely right. Okay, we are now at report from Orange County Schools with Jim Hopkins, who's actually here with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. I am pleased to report that most all the school board employees that have wanted to receive the COVID-19 virus shots have finished both shots or will finish shortly. Our school system has roughly 750 employees and as of last Monday, only 15 were working outside of their assigned location due to the virus. This means we have 735 employees reporting to work each day, ready to serve our students. The school board is working to advance the reopening of our schools as the number of COVID cases in the nation has dropped over 70% since January 9th. Last Monday, the school board passed a motion to reduce social distancing requirements from six feet to three feet if six feet is unfeasible. This change is a result of CDC's updated recommendations for schools that were issued on February 11th. Exactly what this will result in the, this decrease in the distancing, what exactly what will happen on this is really too uh, quick to say because it only happened last Monday. But I predict that the high school students will be back in school two days a week. And uh, this is really important because uh, just to back up how we started the year, high school students were only coming one day a week. And we had about half of them sign up to do that. But once they got back and started coming one day a week, there weren't enough students actually in school. They weren't getting any socialization out of it. So. Uh, a large number of them just opted to be uh, virtual all the time. So one, what advantage of getting them back two days a week? Well, well, that would be half the students potentially. So you could have 700 students in the school at one time and it would start to be more, more feel like a high school situation. So I, I, I predict that will happen. Uh, secondly, in the middle school, the change probably their immediate change will be, well, we first have to know what's happening. They're coming two days a week already, but they stay in one classroom and they don't leave that classroom basically all day. So the change with this three foot distancing in the hallways and so forth, they'll be able to change classes. That means, well, if they weren't changing classes, let me explain, the teachers were changing. So a, a teacher didn't have her own room. The teachers keep moving around and the children stayed uh, stationary. So now this will allow us to go back into the normal way. A teacher has her own room, can set it up the way she wants to do it, and the children will move back and forth between rooms. And so those are the, the main things. Uh, I could go into more details, but I think that gives you an idea of where we're trying to go. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim? Well, I would like to say that I'm so glad that our teachers and staff, school staff, have gotten their vaccines. That's great news. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate your report. Okay. We're at item 4.6, reports of the president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. Anybody have a report? I have none. I have something. Go ahead. Just a just a quick note. Uh, the communications committee is planning 
a virtual committee fair. That'll be uh, more news on that'll be announced a bit later, but they have begun planning and, and putting together a virtual committee fair. This is um, last year, our big one we had planned in person uh, got knocked out by COVID, but that, that work has begun and underway and we'll be making an, they will be making an announcement soon. Thank you, Pete. Terry, anything? No. Okay. All right. Executive session actions. <clears throat> Pardon? Cliff has a oh, Cliff, sorry. Go ahead, Cliff. Uh, I, think, I think we have to repeat the vote that we took in executive session in open session. Yes. But Phil, yeah. do I have that okay. right? All right. Always do. Who made the motion? Let's, oh, the motion. We've got to look at the motion. Call for a motion. Call for a motion. Okay, hold on, just one second. I just have to look at one thing. Thank you. And I think I can do it. So I have to go back to it. All right, uh, I move that we suspend the voting privileges of the member appearing uh, in executive our executive session for a period of 30 days beginning today and ending on, what was it, March 14th? April 5th. April 5th. Um, for, um, let's see here, reckless boating and passing within 100 feet of another vessel. Is there a second? Second. Uh, motion made and seconded per close motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, let me say that that was the first, I, I believe it's the first time that the board has suspended a voter for a month. I believe it's the first time we've done it. In, the, in any case, I want to encourage voters to please follow the rules because uh, it, the, the lakes are more crowded. There's more activity than ever. Uh, and we're becoming, the LCC is becoming more serious with the by, you know, with sentencing. And of course the board has to look at the sentencing, but still we have to protect the people who are using the lake. So please be careful, please follow the rules. Thank you. All right, any committee liaison reports? Okay, hearing none. Let's move over here. Pete. I move the board approve the committee changes as presented. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the committee changes as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. All right, Terry. A uh, referendum update, uh, vote now has removed ballots for those people who voted but are now no longer residents and members of the association. Uh, from, uh, we are now at uh, effective of yesterday, March 5th, at 2,053 total votes received, which is up from 2,046 as of the last board meeting. Great, thank you, Terry. All right, we are now at item 4.7, general manager's report. Bill? Thank you, Madam President and directors and uh, members on the Zoom call. Um, I'll summarize my report. I'm glad to answer any questions about the report or anything else we're doing in administration. Um, First thing is our update on LOA amenities, events, meetings, and offices, uh, coronavirus status. And I'll, I'll say what I'm gonna say and then I'll stop and, and see if you have any guidance or comments. Uh, so there was, there was a, um, a, a briefing by the governor and the governor uh, did loosen up some of the gu guidelines for outdoor activities uh, to the point that you can have a gathering of 25 people outdoors uh, and also there was, a, there was a formula set up for events and that comes into play with us because we have events, we have um, uh, uh, concerts on the point and the sponsors of that event have announced their dates uh, for the concerts on the point. So we're, 
cautiously optimistic we can we can carry those out now uh, I'll skip a little ahead a little bit to those events and you can see those on the details uh, I believe it's on page 11 of the report uh, goes through the events sorry it's on page uh, what page is this mm -hmm. well darn one two I think it's on page six of the report has the events and um, so concerts on the point, we're cautiously optimistic we can gather to do that. Uh, we'll, we may have to limit the number uh, that come to the point, uh, but I'm, I'm hoping there'll be some more announcements. The, go the governor will have more announcements as we go and loosen up a little bit more. At this point, we think the target number would be about 400. So uh, for the first concert, that would probably be an issue. For the other ones, that's a, that, we should be within that, that range. Uh, but that could mean that we have to set up um, some sort of an entrance system, check-in, mm -hmm. first come, first serve, or something like that. I, I don't know if we'd use a ticketing system. I think it would just be first come, first serve, first 400 get, get to go out on the point. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't count boats. That doesn't count the clubhouse deck, et cetera. So um, we're hoping to avoid all that. Uh, but cautiously optimistic is, is, my, is my phrase for the day. Um, so, um, so we did uh, also... Uh, loosen up uh, requirements for pickleball and tennis and that that cheer you're hearing in the background is all the pickleball players excited that we're basically saying um, partner with whom you will uh, but remember to to social distance uh, where you can so um, I, w I would say uh, that that's a that's a big change it's a huge change um, and everyone's very happy and <laughs> and not for this meeting but pro pro probably for when we get the new golf carts we'll probably say you can ride with uh, somebody that you didn't ride to the course with or somebody not in your family because mm -hmm. we'll have the dividers mm -hmm. in the in the golf carts and uh, Mike Harvey showed me how these things are put in and they're fairly easy to take on and off and so if somebody says well hey I want to sit next to my uh, spouse um, then you just take down the divider and you're, and you're fine. So, uh, so we'll do that when we get the new carts. So, um, so we're, we're watching, we're looking over the horizon, watching what's going on, uh, seeing what might happen. We realize that uh, members are getting um, anxious to get out. Um, I was at the clubhouse yesterday evening and members are, they, they, we had a good turnout at the clubhouse and their members want to come out, they want to do events. A lot of members talk to me about the, the concerts and fireworks, et cetera. And so, um, and we know more and more members are getting shots, they're getting vaccinations. And so we're, we're hopeful, we're hopeful that, that all this can happen. Um, as far as employees go, I have a few employees that have had both shots, but uh, they're, they're mostly our, our employees that, that meet, the, meet the criteria for the first, uh, first round of shots. So not too many of my employees have shots yet, but slowly but surely they will. As I mentioned last time, we had hoped to have our own clinic, but that, that got um, removed, taken mm -hmm. back, and mm -hmm. CVS is coordinating through um, vaccinate, what is it, vaccinatevirginia.gov. So, um, so we're hoping that all of us will register and that will trigger having a, a clinic. We're still offering to use our facilities for those clinics, et cetera. So um, that's uh, my report on that. I'd, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Um, as I said, we're, we're talking about these events and what it would take to host them. And mm -hmm. so any guidance you have would be helpful. Directors, do you have any questions or comments for Phil? Hearing none. Um, if I could mention yeah. one other thing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think members are pr probably haven't quite come up all the way to the point where we are, where, where they're going to realize that we're not having fireworks on 4th of July. Mm -hmm. We're having fireworks on Labor Day weekend. Yeah. And then also because we're taking that tranche of money we have in the budget, mm -hmm. that means that we're not going to have a member holiday party unless it's sponsored. Now, there may be some folks that want to spot, like some businesses that would want to sponsor it, that local, mm -hmm. local businesses might say, yeah, we'll pony up some money and mm -hmm. sponsor it. So I guess what I would say is if we're able to hold that, we're, there wouldn't be any LOA money. It would mm -hmm. have to come from somewhere else. But um, Ryan has said there might be a possibility we could get some sponsors for it. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. All right. Do you want to move on to the other part of the your report? Sure. Um, so uh, lakes management report would be the next one. And the, the, the um, yesterday uh, was the uh, due date for any proposals for engineering services for our 
um, uh, lakes management and stormwater uh, management plan uh, study. And we received three proposals. Um, these are professional uh, service proposals, so they're not bids per se. It's, it's ne a negotiated process. But what I would want the board to know is that on March 17, um, at your next meeting, we, we hope to invite the finalist and have you uh, talk to that finalist about any questions, concerns you might have, and then we would have you award the contract at your April meeting, which I believe the date is April 3rd. You would okay. award it on April 3rd. So that's the, that gives you time to co completely understand the proposal and, and the costs, et cetera. So, um, uh, that, that's how we see this unfolding. Um, also, it looks like most of the, all the proposals would carry the work into the rest of this calendar year, so it's unlikely we would be able to finish the study in August as we'd originally planned, but because it's so important, uh, I would say let it take how, much, how long it's gonna take. So um, <coughs> it, it looks like this will be more like a, um, something we'd wrap up at the end of, end, end of the year. So that's the lakes report. I'll, I'll um, hi highlight some of the other items. Uh, we're very proud of Chef Robert Hobel. Um, he received uh, certification from the American Culinary Federation uh, for COVID-19 safe food preparation. And following his lead, uh, the managers of uh, the clubhouse and fairways will take the same train. Oh, so um, communications, uh, Pete mentioned the, the uh, virtual committee fair communications is assisting with that. The finance department uh, was able to get the loan refinancing in place for the clubhouse area recreation complex and uh, is gearing up for early amenity registration. I'll say another word about that here in a minute. Um, we appreciate a member came forward and said that they had noticed some lights were out in front of the clubhouse. We were able to take care of that project. So, you know, we, we find th these things different ways. Sometimes security sees them, sometimes a staff person does, but we I always appreciate when a member sees something that doesn't quite look right and lets us know. Uh, the walk-in cooler uh, uh, invitation for bid went out yesterday, so we're hopeful uh, we'll get uh, some good returns on that. And uh, by the way, at your next meeting, you'll award the clubhouse roof project. We did get three bids on that, so we have, have three good choices on that project. Uh, which is good. Um, Mike Harvey, our golf pro, is leaving us. He's going back uh, to Maryland. We'll, we'll uh, work for a golf course in Maryland, and we're advertising that position. We're looking some, for somebody with a PGA credential. We're looking for somebody that's got um, uh, uh, savvy to run the pro shop, give lessons, uh, think about marketing, not only to our members, but to outside uh, folks. And so we're advertising that in PGA Career Services, Indeed and LOA.org, we've already had a few early responses, but I imagine that next week we'll hear from quite a few more. We, we hope to, to make that gap as short as possible going into the season. Uh, early amenity registration, we tried something different this year. Um, in talking to member services, it seems like people, we, we told them, ahead, we emailed them ahead of time to save paper, uh, but nobody brought anything in uh, to member services, so it meant that the transaction time took a while. People had to, we had to print out forms, et cetera. And then if we had waivers, the people weren't all there to sign the waiver, so we were sort of hung up where we want to, we want to take their amenity payment, but they haven't signed the waiver. So this year, we're fronting it where we sent out emails and we're emphasizing, fill out your paperwork and then come in and do it. And uh, just anecdotally, we've already had 22 people already pay for their amenities, get all the waivers signed, et cetera. So we're trying to jumpstart that whole process. And um, so it's a little twist on what we normally do. You can see the list here on, on the second page of all the, all the groups, pickleball, tennis, fitness center, marina, um, slips, RV boat storage, and uh, canoe kayak racks. We're getting people signed up to do that. And we'll also do the same thing with golf, although golf is a much bigger ask, it's, yeah, the amount of money. So that, I imagine those will be closer to May 1st when they get paid. And so um, also I just want to mention that Fairways and Clubhouse are going to go to their summer hours. Uh, Fairways starting uh, March 15th and Clubhouse starting March 17th. And, um, you know, just everyone's hopeful and uh, gearing up for the new uh, season and hoping for the best and hoping we can get outside more and do more activities here at the lake. And um, that's my report and be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Directors, any questions for Phil? Hearing none.
on, uh, let's move on. Okay. We are now at item 4.8, committee reports, maintenance and ecology committee by Jack Simons, chair. Uh, hi, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to the board of directors, members and guests. My name is Jack Simons, the M&E chair. I'm happy to provide this uh, semi-annual report. Um, I have previewed uh, the report with directors. Um, our current M&E committee consists of seven active members, Mike Dareberry, Ali Felder, Joe Beth Siegel, Stan Wisniewski, Paul Wright, Mike Riley as vice chair, myself as chairman. We have uh, Carl Clausen as our board liaison. Alternate members, uh, Randy McKinney and Jay Fox. Jay also serves as the Lakes Committee Liaison, provides communication there. Since our last report to the lower board, the m and &E Committee has undertaken consistent monthly meetings and logged approved minutes with the help of lower committee support. Uh, there have been a number of personnel changes occurring in the facilities department. We were pleased to see no service drop off and a smooth transition. Many priorities continued on track due to the professional efforts of staff. As might be expected, the recent months have dealt with lower capital and operating budget recommendations. While we didn't expect great traction in a COVID budget impact year, the m &E committee developed four specific capital proposals for lower future consideration. Advocated uh, ditch repair and replacements to return to previous budget levels for the repair and replacement of these critical stormwater management and sediment reduction features that contribute to the health of our lakes. We developed an alternate veterans dam walking trail to uh, express a shorter option for consideration dealing with just uh, a trail, paved trail on the slope. Of, of the dam uh, adjacent to the spillway. This plan has been refined with the help of staff and the Lakes Committee Chair, and we'll be consulting with the Garden Club for some additional input in our net, next budget cycle. We developed a proposal for the 15th fairway as a stream restoration to reassign funds from a proposed pipe daylighting in the first valley off the T to a stream restoration effort in the second valley approaching the green. While the existing pipe remains serviceable, the stream meanders through the woods on the right of the golf, path, golf cart path and is a serious source of sediment to Keaton Lake. We also had a, a recognition of the 100 Monroe Street stream project, which is already uh, understood and endorsed by the board as a priority and aware. We're reanalyzing these and other proposals and believe the capital investment program is a critical activity for the M&E committee to provide recommendations for lower consideration. We're pleased to see uh, the GM advocacy and low, lower board approval of the Lakes Management Implementation Plan to bring it into this year. We're also pleased to be consulted and to provide input on the development of the RFP for this plan. We hope to continue to support staff, engineering experts to bring forward the new plan. We trust this plan will provide a clear current assessment and, a, and strong recommendations for future action. We continue to discuss with staff all aspects of maintenance and ecology and are pleased with our working relationships which are being established. Processes are reviewed and monthly progress is tracked for such activities as road repairs, dredge work, ditch repairs and replacements, and leaf removal. With occasional field visits to consider specifics, we work in support of staff, understand LOA M&E challenges, and to develop recommendations for solutions. Thank you for the opportunity to report this morning. If time permits, I'll be happy to, this, to uh, address any questions. Directors, do you have any questions for Jack? Well, hearing none, I would like to say... Oh, oh, Walt. Walt. Okay, Walt, go. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to jump on your line here, Jennifer. Uh, I wonder if I could talk to you just briefly about the Veterans Dam uh, walking trail. 
uh, I know there's occasionally uh, members of the community come up with all kinds of uh, ideas uh, to uh, improve recreational opportunities on the dam. And uh, the one question that always comes up is to how do you have any kind of recreational opportunity with people on the dam consistent with maintaining the dam's integrity? And I, I noticed you, you're talking about a shortened option for consideration. Uh, does that suggest that the notion of having a walking trail along the entire length of the dam is, is not as favored as it once was, or how does that play out? Uh, we're in support of a complete path in order to prevent water infiltration on the top of the dam, uh, but we see significant erosion on the slope and believe that, that a two-step process might make this palatable in the budget. If a paved path uh, recognized the way people are using the dam, we can prevent water infiltration on the top of the dam uh, and also prevent erosion on the side slope, which I understand is not as uh, critical to the economic life of the dam because it's off the dam, but it's in fact where more erosion is physically taking place and demands more repairs on, a, on an annual basis. Thanks. Does that answer your question, Walt? Yeah, because I know that uh, there's constantly questions about uh, uh, people suggesting, you know, stuff on top of the dam, including putting some picnic tables up there. <laughs> and uh, well, I, you know, uh, I'm, I always approach, you know, once again, it's the engineer. I'm always approaching these from the standpoint of, you know, what's the impact on the, the long term viability of the dam? So I think that it sounds like, you know, the the committee is, is focusing on that aspect of it, which is important. But I, I do think that we need to educate our members that, uh, you know, this ain't a concrete dam and uh, we have to always be cognizant of uh, limitations of what's appropriate to do up there. Thank you, Walt. Any thank more you, questions Walt. for Jack? Okay, seeing none. Thank you, Jack, for your report. It was a very good report, very thorough. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to unfinished business. Unfinished business. Uh, we'll start with item 5.1. Phil, can you start us off? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, so 5.1 is the discussion of the ECC appeal and violations charges referendum and what our activities are going to be. And I'd like to uh, get get some some guidance from the board get some input here I think um, because we only have a couple of other action items if we wanted to we could spend a few minutes on this I wanted to let you know the latest uh, uh, steps as uh, Terry mentioned uh, we've we've updated our um, um, member list and it means that uh, that some of the members that that no longer live in the community have been taken out of the vote and so that's opened up an opportunity to talk to new members mm -hmm. and uh, Madam President, you've sent a letter to new members. You may want to talk about that. That was done electronically for the most part, and then about 50 members didn't give us an email, so we'll be mailing them your letter. Um, so that, that's sort of the first step. And then the second step is uh, Vote Now is going to follow up with an email blast to all who have not voted, new members, everybody is going to follow up with a, a, a voting uh, email blast to them. Uh, there's no charge for that. It's all part of their services. And I imagine they'll uh, we'll, we'll want them to do that on a frequent basis all the way up to your, your uh, June meeting. So at least monthly, if not every, every two weeks. So maybe that's something you could, you could give us on that. Um, and then um, I've, I've had the, I've, I've got to, a chance to see uh, tomorrow's news, so to speak. The, the Lake Currents draft has a letter from you, uh, uh, Jennifer, talking about the, um, a referendum. So I see those as the one, two, three uh, actions that we've taken. Um, we've also ordered uh, some business cards that Walt has paid for. Um, you see the, the, the layout of that business card, um, and we expect to get those in the next few days, and they'll be available to uh, hand out, or, or maybe you could give us some more direction on what you'd like to do with those. Um, I've also, just to prime the pump of your thinking, I've mentioned some other things, such as 
announcements at committee meetings, um, socially distanced contact with members who come in to pay their assessments. Uh, the, I mentioned the vote now, email reminders, and there might be other approaches to engage members that, that you want to talk about today. So um, get, uh, let, let us know what you would like to do and we'll, we'll put those into place. Thank you, Phil. You, you and the staff have been ever so helpful with the referendum. We, we sincerely appreciate it. Okay, the letter that I sent out to new members, actually I had a lot of help drafting it, except for the cover letter. That was pretty much me. <laughs> and uh, we've gotten comments from some of our members, and, and thanks to those comments, I've, I've written another, more about the referendum and the upcoming um, president's letter for the Lake Currents. And I want to credit Pete for paying for the hard copies of that letter. And it just goes to show how the board is really committed to do, passing the referendum. And it's not because of any kind of power play at all. It's for the members, especially the ones where there are lot violations. I mean, think about your neighbors. Think about the community. There are people who flag flagrantly ignore their neighbors and what what is proper, like leaving trash in their yards or dead trees and limbs and uh, parking vehicles so, as sort of out their front advertising using their driving lot as a, their driveway as a as an, an option to advertise and they're not discreet. These are not discreet signs. These are huge. So those are things that show that there are members who are just not being very considerate of their other members. So here we are, we send letters saying, would you please correct this? We get ignored. And we send some, some people get several letters and we still get ignored. So we need some way of getting these people's attention and a daily fine. You, you have 30 days before you start getting fined. I'm pretty sure, am I right, Phil? It's 30 days before you're fined $10, am I right? Uh, you would, it would have to be adjudicated at, in the, and you're talking mm -hmm. about the way we used to do it. Yeah. Uh, you would have to be, it would have to be adjudicated uh -huh. at Lake, uh, excuse me, at the Legal and Compliance Committee. Mm -hmm. So you, you would be invited to, mm -hmm. to the committee to, um, to participate and okay. make your case why yeah. you shouldn't be fined. Okay, but the first letter is not about the fine. That's giving you time before the, you get the fined. The first letter is your opportunity to correct the violation. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't see that as terribly harsh because you have plenty of time to correct the violation. Let, let ECC know, hey, I'm on it. And they will give you time. Uh, like I've said in before, we've worked with people for up to a year because they show good faith in correcting their violation. Like if they built their, put side, the wrong siding on their house or something of that nature. And People, if they didn't have the money but showed good faith and worked towards taking care of that problem, we allowed for that. We're not here to punish. We're here to, for, to get compliance. That's all we want is compliance. So anyway, I've said my piece. Uh, since Walt initiated the idea of business cards, Walt, I'm going to turn to you now. And thank you for paying for them. <laughs> Well, once you know, the, the cost is modest, and I, I, we made the point that it shows that the, you know, that we take this really seriously and understand. Also, we understand the problems of enforcement. Uh, I so I proposed the the idea of the business cards because less times, you know, I was joke about walking my dog. My dog needs a lot of exercise. He's an American foxhound, so I'm out there all the time with my dog. And when you're talking to people about things and they want to talk about what's going on in the association. If you tell somebody about, you know, gee, you ought to vote and blah, 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 and you don't have anything to hand them, you sort of get the blank stare because there's no way that they're going to remember, you know, how to go about doing it. And so if, having a handout is useful because being, it tells them everything you need to know about how you go about, A, finding out whether you voted already and forgot about it or, or to vote. And it's just basically a handy dandy thing to give somebody so they're not writing on the, on the back of their hand how to do it. And I'm hoping that uh, all board members will uh, will make it a habit to have some of these on them, and so that we can uh, give people the information they need when we have conversations with with members. Also, uh, just sort of hitting, sitting here listening, I'm wondering whether or not we might be a good idea to make them available at Fairways and at the clubhouse. Because again, uh, you have a conversation with someone about this, and if you don't give them a takeaway, it, it's very hard to follow through if you remember because. You know, you, you got to 
A, remember to do it, and B, you got to have the information of exactly where you go. So it's basically a, a handy dandy uh, tool to get people to be able to uh, to find out whether they voted, and then um, it, also to vote if they're if they're so inclined. And so I'm hoping all the board members will do it. And again, it might be something we want to make available in the clubhouse and the fairways. Well, I think you're right that we should have cards at the clubhouse and fairways. And Phil has already thought of that as well. I'm thinking we also have them at the Holcomb building, perhaps sure. even at the community center, just where people can see them. Uh, any if other you, If you need more cards, I'll pay for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other ideas for where we should put them? Pete? Uh, not for the cards. This was something else. Uh, I'm sorry. But... Um, one of the things that we had some success with last year until COVID stopped it were voting on site yeah. via computer. We, uh, and if we could ask the elections committees in light of the fact that some things are opening up and we might well be having our concerts on the point uh, out of 400 people at a concert, there's good odds that some of those have not voted and would be willing to sit down. It takes about 60 seconds for them to vote if they're, read it or they may you know we want to read it thoroughly of course but um that we get the elections committee perhaps involved again on the in-person on-site voting opportunities that were successful for us last year uh, prior to last year that's a great idea pete uh, also one of the things we started doing and board uh, directors i'd like to encourage you when you attend your committee meetings mention have your chairs mention the referendum you know getting the word out with their friends and uh, we, I know Pete and I were doing that at the m and &E committee when we went, uh, and a couple of other committees. Uh, I did send, a, a, Jennifer, yeah. I, not to interrupt, but I did send a, a letter to all of the, an email to all of the That's committee right. chairs and asked them to do so. That's right. And if the chair forgets, you remind them as liaison. Phil? I, I was gonna, I was going to say, if, I, I believe Pete had sent something, but mm -hmm. I, I believe it would be okay for the board to say, please yes. chair, put this on your agenda. So it's not, yes. yes. please so that, do that so we can make an so announcement. So the whole committee is reaching out to friends to uh, right. vote in the referendum. Yeah. Committees are part of our organization. That's right. And they're, we and consider the organization them. organization supports this yes, referendum. Yes, and we, we consider them as leaders of the community too. When you join a committee, you're representing LOA. So that puts you in a leadership position. Let me see. What else could we talk about? Uh, does anybody else have ideas about how we, okay, Cliff? Um, and, and I'm going to credit Terry with this idea because she was telling me that she attended a meeting of one uh, social organization that she's involved with. And she talked about the referendum and different things. And That's so um, where we can, I think those of us on the board should try to get on the agenda of some of the social committees uh -huh. that meet they're not board committees they're just you know internal organizations like the lions club and and uh the different political uh, clubs mm -hmm. and uh you know try to get people aware and voting through those mediums also i think that would be a, a way to reach out to people that are having meetings even though they're zoom meetings it's still a meeting and they're there and uh, if you can get on their agenda or get permission to speak, I think it would be helpful. Um, I'm certainly willing and I'm going to look around for mm -hmm. some organizations I can ask to get on their agenda to talk about that. That is a great idea. And, and all of us belong to something, I think. Okay, that's a great idea. Any, any other ideas? Okay, well, that concludes our discussion. Yeah, about I, actually, oh, yeah, I have just ahead. one thing, so go it's ahead. not an idea. Okay. But um, I think, Phil, may, if we could just confirm with vote now that when they send out the emails uh, reminding people who haven't voted, that that email does not say that telephone voting is an option. Because I believe that one of the emails they sent did say that. Oh. And that caused... Okay, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a very good and, point. And good point. And the reason why we can't use telephone voting is because it, we didn't have telephone voting when we opened the referendum in 2019. So we have to go by the rules that were set in 2019. Unfortunately, we've asked and we've asked if we could use mm -hmm. telephone voting and the answer is no. Absolutely we have to stick, with the, stick mm -hmm. with the rules we had in 2019. So again. Okay. 
working toward that June date. Mm -hmm. um, please, uh, I mean, we'll need to continue to write mm -hmm. and Lake Currents, we'll need, to, we'll need to keep the drumbeat going. So we, we mentioned some things. I think those get us uh, down, the, down the road two or three weeks, but I think we're gonna need to continue to, to yeah. discuss this and look at the vote count, see what we're, our, our target is uh, uh, 2,600, mm -hmm. because 2,600 is a good sounding from the community. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we'll, need to, we'll need to continue to talk about this on the agenda if we wanna, yes. wanna get, get to that target. Okay, in fact, you know, if, 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 if directors, if you don't mind, just let us know when you speak to uh, organization and if you've been able to hand out cards. I think that would be helpful. We, that way we'd have an overall view of what we're doing and then we can do mm -hmm. even more. So and, how and, do we get cards? Yeah, how do we get well, cards? Well, as soon as they get in, we'll, we'll send them out with your net, probably with your next uh, packet, we're, if we're not package? earlier. Oh, that's great. Okay, so good idea. We'll, we'll get them out to you right away. Uh, you might want to think about another, um, another member of the, of the board uh, writing about the referendum in, in uh, mm -hmm. the next late currents. Um, oh, anybody is welcome to use the president's letter. Any of or, you are. Or in addition, it doesn't have to be just oh, the okay. president's letter. It can okay. be an, another another director okay. can write. Yep, uh, that's a great idea. Who wants to be next to write a letter about the referendum? We'll, could, we'll do that right now. Walt, can I volunteer you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should have. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I didn't, now what, what's the deadline? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Um, I think um, so. We we publish next Friday, and we usually the deadline is usually so for next time it would be next week. Mm -hmm. So sometime next week. Um, it sounds like it seems like you'd want to talk about maybe some of your experiences talking to other, yeah. other committees or yeah. uh, those kinds of things. You know, and once again, why, why don't you give me a hard date? I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, next Friday. <laughs> Okay, I can do that. Okay. okay. And and okay. who'll be next? I'll do one after that. Okay. Who'll be next? I'll do one. Pete? Yep. All right. Terry? If you must, right? <laughs> okay, what we'll do, what we'll do, I've got you in order. What we'll do is send you your date, the date that we need the article. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me write myself a note before we go on. Uh, so so can you remind me? Yes, yeah, so I got the list, and, and, and I'll ask okay. Carolyn to, to give you the, oh, the okay. headlines. Thank you. Okay. And you can send it to the board, the date sure, to the board, sure. so that we're we'll supporting each other. Okay. Okay. All right. Carl. You got yes? Carl. Anybody else? Carl? No, this may be a sore subject, but thinking back, we used to have a ballot box in the Hokum building, mm -hmm. and when a customer came in to pay a bill, he was given a ballot along with his receipt and he simply turned around and put it in the box. I know there was some controversy at the time that that was an easy way to cheat and miscount the votes. But when you have two or three people from the election committee open the box and you have witnesses about how many is there, I don't see why this box shouldn't be reinvented because it was a good way to get votes. Well, it's just a thought. Definitely just a thought. something to think about, Carl. Absolutely. Thank you for that suggestion. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about yes, that? Yes, please. Um, just to, and and Carl, I know you're saying that was the rumor, but there was never any any uh, evidence that anybody cheated like that. But that um, unfortunately there was there was that idea that you could have you could have cheated yeah, because yeah. you're absolutely right, Carl. When that box got open, there were multiple people there mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to witness it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it w I guess it would just depend on if we went back to a paper ballot, which we, it, it's been in the last few months, we've said we're gonna stay away from paper ballots. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think you're right. It could be something mm -hmm. you talk about, say the next time you have a board discussion. When does the elections committee meet again? Do, do, you, do you know? I don't know. Okay. Um, and I think I think, I think right they're now, called they, the chair they're right now. They prob yeah, they're probably uh, eight months. We, uh, let, we start the board yeah. election. Leighton okay. Cumming is the, is the chair. She's so the chair? Can, oh, okay. Then, then can, we need to reach out to Leighton and ask her about the ballot box, what she thinks, or her committee. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say, uh, this is the last thing I'll say about it. I kind of like the idea of putting a ballot box okay. back in, in several locations or whatever. Uh, I mean, subject to appropriate security and who's going to open what, because mm -hmm. uh, 
I think at this point we should try to get votes any way we can. And I think it's uh, something to think about. Um, okay. And uh, so that's, but I like I think, the idea. I think that we could say something, put something on there that says, if you have not voted in the referendum, please do. And it, especially this is the time of year when people are paying their, their uh, assessment. So that might be a way to get more yeah. votes. Well, well, that's that's a good point, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. We will have, just as we did last year, we'll have a notice on the on oh, your, so you did this on your oh. assessment letter that says vote in the referendum and it'll okay. have the phone numbers, et cetera. Uh, just one reminder about the paper ballot. Um, mm -hmm. you, I mean, that's something that can be, um, we could have we could have paper ballots available. If you do vote a paper ballot and you've mm -hmm. already voted in the referendum, it yeah. replaces your vote. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the, the, we, I know count, that, we count the most mm -hmm. recent one mm -hmm. received. That's why I was thinking if you could put something there that said, if you haven't voted. So maybe if you can't remember. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, I think that pretty much wraps up our discussion. Oh, no, Walt, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just one thing I think it's worth emphasizing again is that, uh, you know, uh, someone who's not followed this closely, which is probably most people because they got they got lives. The uh, the question often comes up of well, why is this referendum taking so long? And well, part of it's been the pandemic, and the other is you know I'm as a lawyer I've I've represented uh, non-stock corporations for decades, and it is notoriously difficult in in not in member organizations to get members to pay close enough attention and to actually vote to change the governing documents. In fact, any lawyer who works in this field will tell you that, and they advise their clients doing non-stock corporations, never to use a member basis unless you absolutely think you have to because of these governance issues. So it's not like there's anything unique about what we're, we're dealing with here. Uh, it is notorious in member organizations all across the country. And you see it when you belong to these things where they're constantly going crazy trying to get people to participate and vote because you need an absolute majority to vote in favor of changing our governing documents, not just a majority of those who vote. In fact, you know, we know that over two thirds of the people who have voted have voted in favor of it. Uh, so, you know, if you want to say, is there a poll as to what members think? Well, we've taken a poll and the poll is two thirds of those who answered the poll said yes. The problem is just the notorious problem of getting participation to reflect what, you know, what the members want. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's nothing strange about what's going on here. It's unfortunately mm -hmm. comes with the territory of member organizations. Thank you, Walt. Uh, thank you for mentioning that because sometimes I, I feel like it's the board's fault and it's not our, it's, we're trying so hard to do what's right for the association. Phil. Correct. I, I wanted to congratulate Walt. He's just written his column. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, I think what you just said would be a, a, a answer so. one of the burning questions. Why yeah. is this taking so long? Right. Um, and I think you said the one too. Uh, COVID meant that we couldn't uh, to have the face face to face meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can get back to this with the concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is, uh, you're absolutely right. And this is true of community associations across the country. How do I get the membership mm -hmm. to the, the number of members to to take action? Mm -hmm. And um, if you'll recall, we gave away $150 special yeah. certificates to amenities. Uh, and we did have a good response. So mm -hmm. we, we, you know, that first wave that came through got us uh, up, up fairly high. It's the, it's the final ones. Oh, no. And that's Such what we've struggle. seen, what we've seen with um, mm -hmm. uh, some of the, the, the referendums that we've done since I've been here, it's right. that, those last ones mm -hmm. that you need to get the final numbers. So when I talked to Leighton about uh, ballot box and what they, what they think, I'll also ask her what she thinks about them going back to you know, like at doing um, concerts on the point, if they think it's a, a good idea to try and get back mm -hmm. out there with a laptop or two and, and try and get votes that way. All right, great. Right? I mean, because if, if the, people are out there, they're, they're going to be I think, masked. I think we would get one. Uh, the first concert would still be in the period before the membership meeting in June. So I, I don't, I don't, I haven't looked at compared the two dates. I believe our membership meetings the twenty twenty fourth. Fourth. And I can't, I don't know if the second concert is before that. So likely mm -hmm. just the May concert. Mm -hmm. 
And so the question is, Phil, given what you're seeing going on at the, at the state level, uh, do you, if you had to guess right now, uh, do you think the governor is going to loosen stuff up enough by the time we have our scheduled meeting for us to have it? And, oh, I think so. I think so. Um, and we'll, I, I know what you're thinking of. You're thinking of the limit of 10. Um, our, our, we're optimistic that that will get loosened up more and we'll be able to have our membership meeting. Um, I don't know how far it'll go, mm -hmm. uh, but, and I don't know when, but I, I imagine we'll have some updates in March. I'll, t I'll tell you something that occurred to me is when you, you know, the entrance, when you see the host, hostess to seat you, if someone could be there with cards and say, have you voted in the referendum? And, and if you haven't said, could you please consider your voting? Here's the information. That's available anytime you all want to do that. Uh -huh. I was thinking, you know, we could, we could do that and the elections committee it just takes, takes one person. Okay. All right, I think that pretty much summarizes our discussion of the referendum. Is there, does anybody else have something to say? Okay. Madam then President, let's... I'll put this on a list and yes. so you all can revisit it Thank and I'll, I'll try to show what, which action mm -hmm. steps we're taking. Mm -hmm. Again, Walt, congrats on already writing your column. You just <laughs> have to, you know, I took some notes. Uh, um, I, I think you made all the key points. <laughs> All right, let's move over, move on to item 5.2. Cliff. I move the board adopt resolution 2021-7, a policy resolution regarding the environmental control and construction procedures. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to adopt resolution 2021-7, a policy resolution regarding environmental control and construction procedures. Phil, would you like to start us off? Um, just briefly, I would say congratulations. This is a huge task yes. that's, that's, um, that's coming to fruition here today. Uh, your ECC has, has been the impetus for this change, but the board has weighed in and given uh, guidance back to the ECC, and they brought back a revised proposal. Uh, we don't norm uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a big deal because uh, we're revising the entire, the entire regulation. And so I'm, I'm looking at it more from um, the, the, the overall uh, organization. And we, we will bring you a couple of others like this during the year. I'll talk to you more about that at the next meeting. Uh, but um, this is an important section. It, it tells uh, members uh, how to approach uh, construction on a lot. It also uh, tells them about modifications that take place on their lot once it's already built. And as we live closer and closer together, as mm -hmm. the lots fill in, um, these kinds of, uh, this kind of guidance becomes very important. So again, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you're going to approve this today. So congratulations <laughs> on getting all this good work done. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to thank Cliff when he was president. He asked me to join him and we met with Mike Ruglis and, and two construction advisory list members. And we worked through the whole darn, uh, <laughs> what, what is it, the amendments to the regulation. Oh my gosh. It has been an intense effort, and it is just now coming up for a vote. So, any other comments? Any direct directors? Do you have any other comments? Yeah. Okay, Walt, go ahead. I, I think that the uh, I want I want to thank everybody for uh, the effort that, that went into really sort of updating, um, you know, uh, uh, the regs, including uh, uh, recognizing that there are. Uh, you know, new things people are doing, some of these outdoor amenities that people want to have now, like fire pits and, and um, you know, and my favorite, of course, is pergolas. Is I, I gave the committee blues over their draft here, uh, that they, they really are trying to update uh, the regs to, and to take into account the things people are doing. And, uh, and it's very hard to write because to some extent you're, you're addressing things that are just now becoming popular. But I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it was a tough slog, but uh, I, you know, they, I think we got a work product here now that we can uh, uh, be happy with un, until it's come time to revise it again. Thank you, Walt. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Terry, I, I guess I'm just wondering, probably a lot of people saw the proposed changes in late currents 
and thought to themselves, well, this is really long and really confusing and didn't read it. Is it worth having an article or a, an ad or something that tells people what the main changes are, which is basically about the new outdoor aesthetic features and how they require mm -hmm. approval? Cliff, you're the liaison for the ECC. What do, what do you think? Well, I, I think once we approve this resolution, we'll, we'll set the effective date on it. Mm -hmm. um, the proposal was put in late currents with all the different uh, variations for people to see. Uh, when we set the effective date on it, I'm not sure if we republish everything again at that point. Uh, it's, it was a pretty big section when they did it uh, and put it in the late currents. But uh, we could look at doing something like that. But I think in terms of where we're at now, we should go on, approve it, and, and move it on. It's okay. This is uh, this is uh, one of those things that's like out of the many one. And there's been so much input and involvement in revising this with different and various people and committees and comments that uh, I think that the people that are interested in it have seen it and uh, weighed in on it. Well, I think what she was talking about was a summary of the outdoor. Right. Uh, so in other words, a summary changes. after approved of the regulation, a summary in Lake Current so people are aware of the fact that effective whatever date these changes are in place and you need to abide by them. Well, I think that I see Cliff's point that there's just far too many, but I do see if we focus on the right. outdoor right. and just summarize it, that would be good. Okay, well, Phil, just just one second, Cliff. So sure. it's part of our rulemaking process is we print the final rule. It is effective today okay. if you vote mm -hmm. yes. It's okay. effective today, we'll print it in Lake Currents, it will take up a lot of real estate to print yeah, it again. Yeah. Okay. We do normally have some sort of summary on the front, but I think what you're you're talking about, Terry, is there would be more, uh, because this is a, a revision of an entire section, how can you boil that down to say all the changes were made? That's a great idea. I, I think that's gonna take some work uh, to do. Um, I, mean, I just, you know, you don't, you don't wanna get the grains of sand, but you don't wanna yeah. gloss over something important because this is, this affects every private lot in exactly. this community. So, exactly. and, and you're right, pergolas and the whole outdoor mm -hmm. uh, furnishings is a brand new section. Right. Outdoor there are aesthetic a lot of features who is already brand have new. Those things in place. Yes, they yeah. do. And they're wondering, what, what does this mean for me? But so they're grandfathered in, work. aren't they? Those? It's going to take some work. But for, for anything, no, it, not it's, not it's, good, it's not necessarily, no. Oh. It's, it's, okay. now, it's now something that. Um, yeah. the, the ECC is going to, going to look at. And okay. um, I, I love what Walt said. I mean, pergolas is something that, that members have come to my office and said, how do I get mm -hmm. my pergola? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm glad we're addressing those outdoor features. But it, I don't know if we can get it for the next late currents, but it, I, think it, I think when we do these comprehensive uh -huh. rewrites, it's probably good that we do. Just a summary. So, yeah. A summary. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Got to figure out who. <laughs> who writes well, it? Maybe not you, Cliff. Maybe not you, Cliff. You're, you're off the hook. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm willing to write a summary. Just You got to give me a date. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I think it's time to call a vote now. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Pete. I move the board approve publishing in Lake Currents for member comment proposed amendments to regulation 10 use of lakes regarding rear view mirrors and the 10 a.m. start time for high traffic times. Second. All right. Motion made and second. Made and seconded to approve publishing in Lake Currents for member comment proposed amendments to regulation X use of the lake regarding rear view mirrors and the 10 a.m. start time for high traffic time. Is there any discussion? I'll just make a comment. Yes. Um, this this has been a process. Um, what, what this boils down to is basically the rear view mirror. You've got one person uh, pulling a skier, one skier, one person in a boat. Um, this is what that rear view mirror is for. And to get it to a size that is generally accepted as a right size for that. Mm -hmm. I noticed some of the new boats come with one already. The second part of this 
the 10 a.m. start time. That was a very long study over the last year of how much how much boat traffic we have between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. And Chief and, and the, the Lakes Committee and the people that participated in those counts determined that it was, it was relatively light. So moving that to 10 a.m. rather than 9 a.m. Right. And we thank the Lakes Committee for the time that they put, put in yep. to help determine what high traffic time is. Anybody else? Phil? Um, I, thank you. I think uh, Pete summarized it well. Uh, I want you to know that uh, Chief and I support both the, the wide angle mir rear view mirrors and the 10 o'clock start time. Um, one new piece of information that came out since we discussed this last time is that older jet skis don't have two mirrors. So that would be a requirement that they'd have to go out and get another mirror. But new, new jet skis, the, the ones that have been mm -hmm. purchased in, the, in more recent years, do have two. Oh. So again, we want the wide angle one for, the, for boats, and, mm -hmm. um, and we want um, two on the, on the uh, jet skis. Now, I had, a, I had a gentleman call me this week. I guess he had heard about this change, even though we hadn't published it yet, and said, well, I have a deck boat. I don't have any place to put a mirror. And so as we talked through it, we said, well, then when you tow somebody, you always have to have an observer. And he said, well, that's what I do now. And I okay. said, well, you're, you're good then. Just continue doing what you're yeah. doing. And I, I think this is all part of making sure our, our lake uh, mm -hmm. is as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, are we ready to vote? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, no new business. Director comments, comments from the directors, anybody? Yeah, my breakfast is getting cold. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> we better hurry. Yeah. All right, uh, announce, okay, schedule meetings, regular board meeting, board of directors meeting, Wednesday, March 17, 2021, community center, 1 p.m. executive session. Oh, sorry, Walt, did you want to say something? Sure, I just want to uh, welcome Cliff back. I mean, uh, Carl back. Uh, we've, uh, oh, we've really, uh, you know, he's, Carl, Carl's had a long uh, long slog here and uh, with, with the medical issues and uh, uh, it's just, you know, we've missed you, great, great to have you back and, uh, and we're gonna now begin to work you like a rented mule. There you go. <laughs> Take it slow, please. <laughs> Well, just generally, we're not supposed to talk about somebody's medical condition just for the future. Okay, back to the board meeting. 1 p.m. executive session, 2 p.m. open session. Then regular board of directors meeting Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, Community Center. 9 a.m. executive session, 10 a.m. open session. Walt. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. All right. Moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. The meeting is adjourned. Aye. Aye. Can we aye. vote? Oh, I think yes. we had a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Meeting is Thank adjourned. you all. Thank enjoy, you all. Enjoy your day.